so we have gone through the JK flip flop. JK flip flop is the basic element to build up a number of circuits where you can use the past and craft your future. Counter is one of the first ones there. It is one of the most widely used applications of flip flops. As far as we are concerned, the counters will discuss with JK flip flop as the basis. You can make counters with other flip flops like master state flip flop or even RS flip flop with some effort. You can make counters, but we will do with JK flip flop just for convenience and to get a feel of that. Our job is to get a feel rather than do an extensive coverage of all types of counters. The simplest of the counters is a ripple counter. A ripple counter, just to get an illustration of how a ripple counter works, I have shown a single JK flip-flop here with J and K values both being kept at 1. J is kept at 1, K is kept at 1. And the JK flip-flop I have shown is a negative yet triggered flip-flop. It's a negative yet triggered flip-flop. This is what it signifies here. This bubble and this triangle shows that. The triangle shows it's a net triggered flip-flop. The bubble along with that shows it is a negative yet triggered flip-flop. J and K are kept at 1. The moment I say J and K are kept at 1, the flip-flop will simply toggle. That means whenever there is an active clock pulse, whenever there is a clock pulse which is going to make a change comes into picture, the flip-flop will just change state. If it was in 1 state, it will go to 0 state. Earlier it was in 0 state, it will go to 1 state. Up and down it will just go on. Nothing else, only this change, morose and monotonous change will take place in the flip-flop. Now, I say when the flip-flop is in state 1, when Q is 1, in state 0, when it is in Q is in 0. I have shown a square wave clock, neat clock pulse, that is, a clock wave form, which will remain at 1 state for some time, 0 state, 1 state, zero state, on and down it goes, equal time. A waveform where the up and down states both are equal in duration, it is customary to call it a square waveform. I give a square waveform here. One state, zero state, one state, zero state, e equal time period. Like, you know, one, one microsecond here, one microsecond here, one microsecond here, one microsecond here. A total period of two microseconds. That means 500 kilohertz. 2 microseconds, right? 500 kilohertz, typical waveform. Then I give that, at every negative edge of the clock, the flip-flop is going to change state. Here, it is in state 0. I got a negative pulse here, negative pulse for the clock. The flip-flop changes state from 0 to 1. It continues to in state 1 until the next negative clock pulse. At this clock, negative clock pulse, it changes to 0 state. It continues in zero state. When the next negative clock pulse comes, goes to one state. It continues in one state. Next negative clock pulse, zero state. It continues. Is all right? Is okay? Very simple. Operation is very simple. Whenever there is a negative pulse, the flip flop has changed state. Is all right? But please have a fresh look at the whole thing. To the flip flop, at the clock input, I have given a square wave form. At the output, I have got a square wave form whose frequency is half that of the input. Here, for every period, for every two periods, here there is one period. Sorry, the output wave form, period is just half of that of the input side. The flip flop divides the clock by two. By that I mean frequency. I mean the frequency. Is it all right? So it just does a division by 2. Okay, put it in a slightly different form. If I don't give this input at regular intervals, I give at irregular intervals, I give the input at irregular intervals, even then, at the negative rocket, the output will change. 
So, if you simply divide the number of pulses again by 2, may not be uh, regular because input is not regular, output is not regular, but again, it is simply dividing by 2. That's what a single flip flop does. Is it alright? It's okay? Okay, now I'm taking the next step. The flip flop toggles, at the, at the arrow shows the negative edge. The flip flop toggles at the negative edge. Q wave, output wave, has a period which is twice that of the clock. The flip flop divides the clock by a factor of 2. Look at this. I put three flip flops just to get a representative picture. I have taken three flip flops. All the flip flops are having J and K as 1. If I take the first flip flop, J and K are connected together and get into one state. Second flip flop, J and K are connected together, one state. Third one, J and K are connected together, one state. All the flip flops are arranged as toggles. Okay? At the clock input, if I give a clock signal, at the negative edge of the clock, the flip flop is going to change state. Now, what I have done, here I give an external clock signal. At the input of the first flip flop that I call as flip flop A, I have given an external clock signal. The output of first flip flop, that is QA, that output I use as clock to flip flop B. Output of flip flop B, I use as clock signal to flip flop C. Very simple. Okay, it's a tandem connection. This output, flip flop A output, forms a clock signal here. Flip flop B output forms a clock signal here. Come back to the waveforms. I have shown a square waveform, whichever, whatever I considered earlier. At the negative edge here, the arrow shows QA is changing state. At the next negative edge, QA is changing state again. At the next, this negative, okay, at this I left out, okay. I left out. And then at this, same, it is changing state, but I left out. At this negative edge, again it is changing state. On and on it goes. Alright? QA is changing state at the very negative edge of the external clock. Now QA is the clock for flip flop B. Look at flip flop B. At the negative edge of this waveform, flip flop B is changing state. It has changed state here. Again at the next negative edge, it has changed state. It has gone to zero here. Again at this negative next negative edge of QA, it is changing state. Same thing continues. QB is another square wave. Its frequency is half of the frequency of QA. Continue the same logic. QB forms the clock for flip flop C. At the negative edge, flip flop C is changing state. By the same logic, it changes state here next time. Same thing continue. I got one input square waveform, QA as another waveform, QB as third waveform, QC as a fourth waveform. All of them divide the incoming clock by factor of 2, 2, 2. Again, that binary factor of 2, everywhere it appears. Input waveform is divided by 2. Is all right? Now, you look at, if you look at clock QA, QB, QC, If I take the first clock period, this is 0, QA is 0, QB is 0, QC is 0. QA is 1, QB is 0, QC is 0. At successive clock periods, that is, this is the clock period C0, clock period C1, clock period C2, clock period C3, and so on it goes, successive periods. The instance of change are T0, T1, T2, T3 and so on. They are the instance of change. T0 is at the end of clock period C0. T1 at the end of C1. T4 at the end of C4. It continues. I have given a table of values of different flip-flops outputs at the, during the periods 
शिशुरो सी वन सी टू प्लीज हैव ए केयरफुल लुक एट दिस डिफरेंट पीरियड्स द फर्स्ट कॉलम शोज पीरियड्स सी जीरो सी वन सी टू सी थ्री सी सेवन सी एट सी नाइन इट कंटिन्यूस एट इन्फिनिटम सक्सेसिव पीरियड्स नेक्स्ट कॉलम शोज ओके दिस कॉलम शोज द वैल्यू आई जस्ट आई हैव टेकन केयर टू अरेंज दिस दिस इज क्यू ए जीरो वन जीरो वन जीरो वन इट कंटिन्यूस नेक्स्ट इज क्यू बी जीरो जीरो वन वन जीरो जीरो वन वन क्यू सी जीरो then followed by one is all right is it okay what are the states i have shown here there is a one to one correspondence between the state and the state in the wave form is it okay and do okay now after putting in the table you see during c0 if i take this qa qb qc qa qb qc if i take it as a binary number If I take it as a binary number, during C zero, the binary number is one. I have shown the binary equivalent binary number. This one decimal value here. During C one, the binary number is. I'm sorry, here it is zero. During C one, it is one. The equivalent decimal is one. Just see this. The equivalent values are zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It goes up to seven. Again, it goes to zero. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. If I look at this set of three flip flops together, working together like this, it is working as a counter. It is simply counting. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Zero, one, two, three. It is counting from zero up to seven, back to zero. Zero up to seven, back to zero. It is counting. What is it counting? It is counting the next. Negative, negative pulses. What is the number of negative pulses that are coming? It is counting up to seven, and then going back to zero, counting up to seven. Is all right? So we are used to flip flop. We are connected in a manner that we want. We have made a counter. Only thing is, since we are using three flip flop, the counter counts from zero up to seven. If you use two flip flops, it will count from zero up to three. If I use four flip flops, it will count from zero to fifteen. Five up to thirty-one, six up to sixty-three. You can use as many flip-flops as you want. You can increase the size of the counter as much as you want. You have to give a proper interpretation to that binary number. That binary number it represents. That is the value of the state of the counter. Is okay? Is all right? This is called an up counter. It just continuously counts up. You have no choice. The plot need not be periodic. You put any arbitrary waveform at every negative edge. There is a counting. It is an up counter. It is called a serial counter. It is called a serial counter. When I say by the term term serial, what I mean, I'll come to that bit later. Here, I have taken, I have taken here this output and connected here. I have taken this output and connected here. This flip flop responds only when this fellow changes. This flip flop responds when this fellow changes. To that extent, it is a serial counter. I will change. When the fellow behind me gives me a pokes me, only then I will change. The one ahead will change only when I poke him. It's a serial operation. One followed by the other one. Like that, sequentially it will go. To that extent, it's a serial counter. You put one more flip flop, it becomes a four-bit binary counter. You put n flip flops, it will count through two raised to n states. Is okay? I have made a slight difference here. Instead of connecting all J and K to one state, I made a slight change in the logic. It gives me a better counter. All that I have done is put this I connected to one. Then 
here this J and K I connected to QA. This J and K, this J and K, I connect to QA and QB. This J and K, I connect to QA, QB and QC. All of them, I give the same clock pulse. All the flip flops I give the same clock pulse. Let us go back and see why I do this. If I look at this table, whenever QA is in one state, that is during C1 here, at the next negative clock pulse, QB is changing state. Here also QA is 1, at the end of the negative, that, that C3, QB is changing state. Here also QA is in state 1, at the end of that period, QB is changing state. Is okay? Now, let me take QC. If I take QC, it is changing state here. Whenever flip-flop A is at one state and B is at one state, flip-flop C is changing state. Alright? Look at this again. A is at one state, B is at one state, Flip flop C is going to change state C from 1 at the end of C7, it is going to back to 0. A is 1, B is 1, at the end of that, C is again changing state. Same thing will continue continuously. So, by looking at it carefully, we find that a flip flop changes state, then all the flip flops preceding that are in one state. When all the flip-flops preceding that are in one state, it is changing state. I would like to cash in on this and make a slight change in the logic. I make a connection like this. QA, when it is at one state, I would like QB to change. So I connect it here. I want it to change means I want it to make it as a toggle. So when QA is at one, I would like flip-flop B to toggle. When QA and QB both are at 1, I would like flip-flop C to toggle. Is it alright? I would like flip-flop C to toggle, to change state, that is to toggle, if all the preceding flip-flops are at 1 state, that is QA and QB both are at 1, at that time I have both JC and KC as 1, which is going to toggle. Same way, this flip-flop, I want it to toggle or change state, when all the preceding flip-flops are at one state, that is QC, QB, QA, when all the three are at one, through this hand gate, I make JA and K, JD and KD as one, at that time, this will toggle. So I give the same clock pulse. I use the J and K input values to be decided by logic, but I use the same clock pulse. So okay, the difference? You understand the difference? <coughs> Earlier, one flip-flop was used as a clock for the next flip-flop. Here, the state of all the previous flip-flops are properly used to set the values of J and K. The same clock is used everywhere. Is it alright? J and K values are decided by the earlier setting. Clock period is the same. I mean, clock signal is the same. When I do like that, the flip-flop becomes synchronous in operation. All the flip-flops, which I'm sorry, the counter, the counter becomes synchronous in operation. All the changes are taking place as dictated by the external clock signal, not by the state of the flip-flop. Whereas, you saw right? The external clock signal, when that becomes zero, when that goes from one to zero state, the flip-flop is going to change state. Whereas in the previous case, there's a slight difference here. In this case, this flip-flop is changing whenever this is changing. But look at this. This will change when this one changes. This will change up, this changes after the previous one changes. So first, there's a negative clock pulse here. QA changes, there's a negative clock pulse. Then QB will change. This is still worse. Clock changes, QA changes, then QB changes, then QC changes, then QD changes and so on. The change is sequential. Here there may be delay of say, 10 micro, 10 nanoseconds, another 10 nanoseconds, 10 nanoseconds, it may just go on. And in this session, a delay. It is an asynchronous operation. 
it is a serial operation, one after the other. Whereas in the other case, it is a synchronous operation. This is a synchronous operation. All of them work in synchronism. All of them change shape at the negative edge of the clock. It is a synchronous counter. There is no waiting for a previous clock to change state. A synchronous counter, the instance of transition are predictable. The operation is more predictable and precise. It is preferred wherever possible. An asynchronous counter is used only where it is essential or maybe very small systems. Just like as I told you, the difference between synchronous and asynchronous systems, it holds good for the counter also. Is it okay? Now, I made a small change here. Instead of using QA, QB, QC as the outputs, I have used QA bar, QB bar and QC bar as the signals for J and K. When I do like that, you will see what happens here. I go back a bit. Here, I have used QA bar as the J and K values here. So when QA bar is 1 and you give a clock in input here, this will change its state. Similarly, when QB bar and QA bar both are at one state, this JC and KC are 1. At that time, this flip clock will change state. Same thing continues. If I take the waveforms, so please have a look at the waveforms. See what happens here. Is it alright? See, negative clock first. I'm sorry, negative yet. QA changes state. Negative yet. QA changes state. QB changes state. Similarly here. It's okay? So QA, QB, QC, these are the waveforms. I'm sorry, the QA bar, QB bar, QC bar, QD bar. These are the waveforms. They are similar to what we did earlier, what we did. I have shown the corresponding QA, QB, QC, QD waveforms. For the same case, I have shown the QA, QB waveforms. You find here that originally all these are at one state. And the flip-flop comes down from 1, 1, 1 to 0, 0, 0. It is as though the flip-flop will continue to start off from here and then go down here, go down here, go down here like this. It counts in the reverse manner. Is it alright? Is it okay? You please have a look at the waveforms carefully and see whether that is okay. QA bar, QB bar, etc. are the signals for triggering the change. The output I am still taking from QA, QB, QC and QD. Output is taken from there. The trigger signals are different. Is it alright? Mistake on no, here I have shown QA bar, QB bar, QC bar, QD bar. Yeah. Correct. I have taken all of them at zero state. At the first clock press, QA bar is changing state. Next clock press, again it is changing. Actually, it is the same waveform as the earlier case. Instead of QA, I have to put QA bar. I rub it up and put QA bar. That's all what I have done. You are not supposed to ask that question. I taken earlier I don't have QA, QA, I put a QA bar. QB, I put QB. No, that is your conclusion. That's your conclusion. And you look at only this flip-flop. You take it as a local problem. Locally, is it behaving okay? Locally, it is okay? This is okay? This okay? That is okay? I have taken the outputs and put here. Okay? Corresponding QA, QB, QC, I put here. 1, 1, 1, 1. Because all these are 0, 0. Corresponding 1, 1, 1. From first, this 
this is changing from 1111 this is changing so okay output is taken from qa to bqc trigger is taken from qa bar to b bar output is taken from qa to b so okay is it all right output is taken from qa to b output is same but your trigger signal is changed okay i think i should elaborate this what sugumar is pointing out is news qa qb qc and qd to trigger succeeding flip flops succeeding at first and then interpret interpret qd qc qb qa as a binary number what do you get up counter so okay you get an up counter now what i do is use qa bar qb bar qc bar and qd bar to trigger succeeding flip flop interpret again interpret qb qd qc qb qa as a binary number you get a down counter okay you get a down counter is all right that's okay let me take things one step further what i'll do is i got various logic gates i can play with them i will provide a 2 to 1 multiplexer i will provide a 2 to 1 multiplexer i will select qa or qb bar sorry qa or qa bar qb or qb bar qc or qc bar qd or qb bar. i will select in one case i select qa qb qc etc for triggering in the other case i select this then if i use a 2 to 1 max by for doing this with that select signal for some time i can make the counter to work up to not counter or not work up to counter then suddenly i change it let my pins and fancies i change it you pona hello pona i do that and it will start counting down it will count up it will count down the whole thing is under my control is it all right so i put a 2 to 1 match i do this this is a control signal i put here qa i put here qa bar i use this for j jb and kb same thing i do for other flip flops i will talk about the the transparency is there Okay, this is a train. I show the same period, same thing. 
is counting down. The down counter, as same sequence I've shown, from 15, it is counting down to 14, 13, etc. It goes down to zero. All right? It's a down counter. From an up counter, I just changed the trigger signals and made a down counter. I have shown a down counter, just synchronous down counter. You can make asynchronous down counter. As we made the earlier counter, ripple counter, you can make an asynchronous down counter. Now, this is what I have done here. This is called an up down counter. This up down signal, this up down signal, this is up down signal. Okay, I will bring that fellow here. This is my control signal. Depending on whether it is high or low, the counter will count up or count down. Is all right? Please compare with our ALU. The ALU that we considered in the morning, it is a programmable device. I can do an function, or function. I can do addition, subtraction. What is the function I do? I can program that function. I select the control signal. I set a particular combination. I get an un function. I change the combination. I get summing. I put another combination. I get subtraction. So the activity that I do, the activity that I do is decided by the control signals. We are landed up with a programmable device. ALU is a programmable device. The function that you do, you can program. ALU is a programmable device which is instantaneous in operation. Here I got the first counterpart of a programmable device with storage. I can make a counter count up. I can make it count down. The facility is programmable. It is within your control. First time you have got a counter which you can count up and we can use it to count up. You can use it to count down. You take a movie house. I want to know how many people are inside. I will put a big counter. I will put a big counter. Every time a person goes in, it will count up. Every time a person goes out, it will count down. I can use the turning of the turnstile where the people are going. I put a turnstile. Uh, for every change in position, I can use it as a pulse input. I can count up. Every time it goes the other way around, I can reconfigure, it will count down. So every time it turns in one direction, it will be working as an up counter for every person going inside, it will count down. For every person coming out, it will count down. Same way, any device you want to make where you want to count the next number of contents somewhere. So, you know, some number is increasing due to some reason, it is decreasing now. Due to another reason, number of students are coming in or going out. You want to get the next number. You put an up-down counter with a programmable facility and use the programming signal properly, you get the next content at a place. Is all right? So you have got an up-down counter. If it is in one state, it does like this. It is configured as an up counter. In the other case, I have shown the configuration here. That is, if the if the control signal is in one state, see this gate is open. This gate is closed. This is zero. If this signal is one, this is zero. So this output is zero. It's not coming to picture here. Only this is steered to this. Same way here, when that signal is one, this will not come into picture here. This output will be steered to this, and so on it continues. Okay? That's an up counter. The other thing is a down counter. Aru. I have not given the clock signal. Hmm? Yeah. 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 So many, please make a note. Let to make a change in the draft. My draft had to make a change.
I shall continue. Now, the way we have done the counter, it's, hopefully it's started from zero, count up, count down and all that. But suppose you actually put a counter in practice with uh, say 20, 20 flip-flops, you can make it to count up or count down. At the time of switching on, each flip-flop will have its own you know, fancy, which you, one flip-flop may go to state one, another may go to state zero. Net result is the counter may start up with some odd number and start counting up or count down. To prevent that, at the time of turning on the supply, it is necessary to set or reset the flip-flop to a required value. So the flip-flop that you use will be having the preset and clear facility that we discussed in the morning. So in a typical counter, you will have the set of flip-flops, you have the up counting up count signal, you have the down count signal or the same one, you know, up one and zero state. You will have the preset for each flip-flop, you will have the clear for each flip-flop. All these facilities will be available in a counter. With all that, you can start the count at any desired value. You can make it count up. You can stop. You can change the status. Make it count down. After some time, again you choose preset and clear. You can put the set at, uh, down, uh, counter to any desired value. All these are available as facilities to you. Okay? So that becomes a very versatile counter. Now, you can be innovative. You, you see the counter that you have made is a blind counter which will count from 0 to 15 or 0 to 31, 0 to 63. Depending on the number of flip-flops, it will blind, blindly go through a binary count sequence. Or when you count down, once again it will count down from 63 down or 127 down and so on, a binary count sequence. No change, no possibility of doing any other counting. But I can be a bit more innovative. What I'll do will be, in this up-down counter, in this up-down counter, I'll just only indicate the method and leave it here. In this up-down counter, instead of making this J and K just like this, I can put, with some effort, I can change the logic. I can change the logic for this J and K and then make this flip-flop change state at some other time. Depending on here, I have used one logic. I want it to count up or count down. I, I know the logic I have to do, so I have implemented that. Instead of that, I can use the J and K values in some other combination and give to a flip flop. Then instead of simply counting from 0, 1, 2, 3, from 7, I can make it jump to 9, or from 9, I can make it jump to 19. It depends on what logic you use for deciding the J and, values of, J and K values of different flip-flops. Is okay? Such a counter is a more involved counter. So for example, I can make a counter count from 0 up to 9. Again, 0 up to 9. It's a decay counter. It's according to a binary sequence that will count a decimal sequence. That is called a binary counter. With some effort, See, this is a typical binary counter. Count from 0 to 9, again back to 0. It is easy to put on the table. But by examining the table, say for example, when the count value is 9, that is when 1, 0, 0, 1, at that time, I would like all the flip-flops go back to 0. Okay. So I will work on the logic, get K and J values for every one of the flip-flops under these conditions, put a corresponding logic. If I do that properly, you will start off from 0, go up to 9. Start off from 0, go up to 9. Go back. That is a decay counter. J and K values can be suitably redefined to get a decay counter. I have shown here, I have worked out the logic for a decay counter and shown it here. You can just go through, verify that it is counting from 0 up to 9 and then back to 0. For a decay counter, you have to work with four flip-flops. With three flip-flops, you can count only from zero up to seven, only seven states, not more than eight states. Zero to seven, eight states. Maximum of eight states, you can make a counter to work through with a set of three flip-flops. You cannot go beyond that. 
If you want more than eight, you have to go for four foot plums. If you want more than fifteen, you have to go for five foot plums, and so on. So for a ticket counter, you require four foot plums to be used, and the logic to be properly defined. I have shown this. I have done the workout. I have shown it here. You please verify and see it is working from zero to nine. Now, if I have done that, I can go one step further. I can connect them together, and that becomes a ticket counter. Signal and use for first fill. 
It's okay. I hope I hope scared. It's okay. Uh, so it, it it boils down to this. You you have to decide what you want. You decide what you want. If you are clear as to what you want, you should be clear as to what you want beforehand. If you are clear, your logic is clear. If your logic is clear, you can make out the corresponding logic function. If you realize the logic function, you can implement it. Is okay. So now I have cascaded two decimal counters and got counting from zero zero up to nine nine, or I can count down from nine nine. I can count back to zero zero. I can make it as an up counter, down counter. I can count in decimal form from any number to any other number and etc. Is it all right? Here. My number is represented in B C D form. You can see that this represents one digit. This represents the next digit. The number is represented in B C D form. It's a decimal counter. It is a B C D counter. Decimal counter counting in B C D form. I can put one more one here. One more counter here. One more decimal counter. That will come from zero 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 up to nine nine nine. All are in B C D form. I can continue. Now, well, we are taking binary counter, which blindly counts from zero, one, two, fifteen, back to zero, one, two, three, fifteen. With four flip flops, I made a binary counter. I took one step further. I said that I need not constrain myself to binary counting. Why should I do this? I can have a decay, decay counter. I count from zero up to nine, back to zero. I can cascade them. Zero up to nine, ninety-nine. I can just go back. I can do. I can count up. I can count down. I'll take one more step forward. I am not constrained. I don't want to do this counting. I would like an arbitrary sequence to be generated. The sequence I have to generate, I have shown here. I want an arbitrary sequence. Zero, 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 one, zero, one, zero, like this. I have defined a sequence. I want that to be generated. You can do that. That's the most versatile. Circuit you can make with a set of flip flops, a sequence generator, any sequence you want. Random, you know, random means you define. You define a sequence, you can realize it because any next state of the flip flop, you decide depending on the present state. Take all the logic, or no Q A, Q B, etc. Based on that, you define the J values. Take the present Q values. Define the next J and K values. Give a clock input. You have got your next state. So from any desired state, you can go to next state. Any desired arbitrary sequence can be generated, provided you are prepared to build in the necessary logic circuit. I give an arbitrary sequence here. The sequence of one, two, three, five states. I have put them as L, M, N, P, and R. Just for my convenience, these are the states. I would like for so every clock pulse. I want the sequence say first clock pulse. It originates in state L. Then I would like to go to state M, then N, then P, R, back to L. M, N, P, R, back to L. I would like this sequence to be generated. I put a bit sequence like this. Realize the corresponding JK values and realize the circuit. I show see here the typical. Way of representing a sequential circuit in a digital system, I mean, of the uh, uh, terminology. <coughs> a, a state is represented like this. This is one state L. From that, just go to this state, then this state, then this state. It continues. This set of five states. You should just go on continuously sequencing. I have gone through defining for that particular sequence. I have defined Q A Q B. I'm sorry, J A J B, K A K B, K C and so on. Every one of them I have defined. I just given the corresponding table and defined the corresponding functions. You realize that you get a complete sequence generator. That is possibly, as I told you, the most versatile use of flip flop by themselves. I think I'll 
stop it here. We'll have tea. We'll come back.